Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me in a super sunny North Wales. I'm not sure there's anywhere better when the weather is like this. Look at it, yeah, with uh, up there, the pointy one, Crib Gok, the ridgy one at the end, people paddle boarding in the lake, nice green trees. Oh, it's lush at the moment. We've had a nice mix of weather uh, for the wildlife. It's like, it's been really hot, but also it's been quite damp at times as well. So everything's sprung up, it's lovely. I've, excuse me if I'm a bit on edge, I've just seen the biggest spider of my life at my house. I was just getting my bike out my shed because I've ridden down here to Lion Rock. Honestly, massive. If you live in Australia, you'll think it's a tiny one, but it's the biggest I've ever seen in the UK. Today's video though, now I've sprinted away from home, is uh, it's the follow up to the cams one. The last cam one was uh, which cams to buy in 2022 and ran through some of the main ones, the pros and cons of them all. Today's one, how to place them. I guess there's a few more considerations uh, compared to placing a nut or a hex where you're just sort of wedging a wedge shaped thing in a crack of course making sure the rock's solid etc. A little bit more to think about with cams but not too much so you'll join me down by this lovely crack in a second. Thankfully it's quiet here today so I've got the best spot uh, and I'll run through that kind of stuff. I'm sat next to a good little crack here so in a second I'll demonstrate some placements and I'll use my, my phone camera to zoom in a bit to give some close ups of those. The GoPro has died as always, I've got a love-hate relationship with that thing. Big thanks, of course, to Outside, to Wild Country and to Beta Climbing for supplying these couple of cams as well that I didn't have on my rack. Uh, I use Dragons, mostly DMM Dragons and Black Diamond C4s, as well as a couple of small totems. Useful to see these for the video as well, though. Before I place some stuff, though, just want to run through kind of how a cam works. Proper geeky stuff, um, but I love geeky stuff. They were designed in the 70s by someone called Ray Jardine, who was an engineer, a climber as well. And uh, he, they're called, they were called friends originally, Wild Country still called them friends, because when he was developing them, he used to bring them along in a bag and his mates would check that he's brought these new special things and they say, have you brought the friends today? Uh, and off they'd go and, and bang them in. They were a bit secretive about them to start with because they're revolutionary nuts and hexes they need that sort of v shape that constriction in the in the rock don't they to wedge themselves in but we don't always get those there's loads of parallel cracks you think of a parallel crack you probably think of something in the states these slitter cracks um or you know in chamonix and the granite and stuff like that we get plenty here as well of course especially up in the slate but we get a lot of in the uk especially i mean you do get these pretty textbook things on the grit as well but a lot of the time our rock is quite sort of textured, it's got nobbles and bobbles and what have you, but it's still generally parallel. That gives us some extra stuff to think about perhaps into how we place it, but the principles are the same. The lobes, these metal bits, rely on friction between the metal and the rock. They turn that friction into outward force and that's what gets them gripping in there. When we pull the trigger, they get smaller and we let it go, they get bigger. We roughly break it into thirds. The thirds aren't quite equal though. The first third is that kind of little bit there where they are camming, but it wouldn't take much for them to move just a little bit on a rock crystal or something and suddenly they're not cammed, there's no friction, out it slides. The sort of final third, that bit at that end, call that over cammed, in that sort of range, really easy for the cam to get stuck. It's super safe, but expensive, 60, 65 quid or whatever. If you can't pull the trigger, you can't get it out. If you climb enough, you'll see some stuck cams. It's happened to a lot of people. Touch wood, not to me yet. But when you're panicked and pumped, and you just want something in, we bang it in. You could get unlucky if you just ram it in and don't have some trigger movement left. So what we're really after is that kind of middle third, which like I say, is bigger really. It's from not quite crossing, somewhere around there, to crossing to get the angel wings. Somewhere in that sort of range is what we're after. When you buy cams, read the instructions there's pictures in there that, that highlight that really clearly okay so somewhere in that middle range is in the sweet spot camming stuck in there but you can still pull the trigger to get them out okay when you put it in that crack you usually not always but usually vertical cracks okay you bang it in what would happen if you fell on it is it gets pulled doesn't it there is some bend there so that's not necessarily terrible but we want to try and preempt that loading so in an ideal world we'll place it like that and then there's not so much change in the angle when you load it. 
a belay might be outwards, downwards, whatever, think about it for the belay as well. Okay. You can place them into horizontal brakes uh, and you will. Yeah? If you think of gripstone, horizontal brake, horizontal brake, loads of them. So you'll often do that. All things being equal in that parallel crack, we're going to try and get the wider lobes, those two on the bottom, it gives you more stability. But sometimes all the nobbles and bubbles of different shapes and the cracks dictate that maybe it actually sits better that way. So you have to have a play really. Original friends they had a big solid stem and they're a bit snappy potentially in those horizontal breaks. But these ones bend, right? The totems bend even more. They're, it's hard to pick that up on the video, but they're so flexible just there that they can really bend over the edges. Still don't want sharp things. They're going to be damaged, but they do have that flex in them. Okay. One of the downsides of friends is they can walk, they can move, because there's moving parts in them. If the rope affects the placement and it gets pushed up and down a bit, it, they can walk inwards. So you can place the perfect placement and maybe you forget to extend it, even with these ones. You might still want to, once you've done that and pulled it, you still might want a quick draw on it as well. It depends, single ropes, half ropes, the line of the route, etc. But even in the perfect placement, if you pull that way and the rope's pulling it back and forth, they actually want to go that way and they can pop out at the back of a crack and slide down or they could walk in and it narrows and they get over cammed and your mate can't get it out so it's been expensive for you. So it gives some thought to extending stuff. The totems, going back to that one again, because of that flex and the way they're independently loaded, I'm not going to say they never walk but they're much less likely to walk. So still extend them for rope drag and stuff like that but they're much less likely to walk. I said that cams rely on friction between the metal and the rock. If there's no friction, they're not going to grip in, so they can't create that outward force. So you think, where, where isn't there going to be friction in a climbing sense? Winter climbing, icy cracks, that's not going to be ideal. Green, slimy limestone, you're banging it deep into some crack, it might just slide out. So you've really got to give that some thought. The totems, uh, they put a bit more outward force, so they're a little bit more grippy. Metal's a bit of a different uh, mix as well. So they can be a bit more grippy, so maybe that's a, one of the big pluses of totems is to get that extra grip in those kind of, let's say, more marginal placements. They're not magic, but they, they do buy you a bit of margin for error, perhaps, so they are nice in that regard. Lastly, you do want to, before I place some, you do want to get those lobes roughly equally loaded. doesn't mean they have to be like perfectly equally loaded, but you don't want two completely shut and two only just camming. That's not ideal. The exception being the totem, but only for aid climbing. A totem can be loaded on two of the cam lobes and still stick in there. But totems say that's only for aid climbing, not for lead climbing falls. With your regular ones, your black diamond, your uh, wild country and everything else, the regular ones, you want to have them all roughly equally loaded. Two lobes loaded would not be safe. Okay, Oop, as he drops it. When you clip in a quick draw, it depends how long you want it to be. You could clip straight into there, you can clip into there. Some of the others, like the dragons and the wild country ones, have the extendable slings. They can be a nice feature. Um, I, I'm not fussed about them really. The DMM ones have got the, the sort of the thumb uh, termination rather than a loop. I prefer the ones with a loop personally, but it's personal choice. Right, let's have a look at some placements and, uh, and mention those things. So you get the phone ready to zoom in. Um, my crack that's here, I know it's a bit shady and dark, I'll try and stand here actually and put a bit more shade on it, uh, it might come out better, uh, there we go, roughly parallel back here, so I'm looking at that and thinking okay that is going to be a cam placement more than likely, and I'll get the big gold one and I'll try that one, I'm squeezing it, I'm squeezing it quite a lot, I put it in, it's definitely on that over cam side isn't it, I can still just about pull the trigger and get it out, but it's it's pretty close. You can see how this lobe is right on the edge. Okay, it's not very deep into the crack. It might be all I can get, in which case I'll have it. But it's worth with these things, just flipping them over and trying it the other way. Actually, it sits a lot better that way, but it's also, especially at the bottom, the two underneath, they're much more over cammed. Uh, you can see, there you go, those two at the back, they're very much over cammed. So I'm not really keen on that because I feel there's more chance of that getting stuck. So I'm gonna try and get it out. There we go, it's a bit of a fiddle, but okay. If I was to go into my pile here, get the green cam, so it's a C4, that one. I could try this in the same bit and see where I can get it. Well, it's just about touching, isn't it? There's just about something, you can see it's slippery, it was only just touching, I wouldn't even call that cammed, it's just touching the sides, isn't it? Um, 
So that's the, that's definitely the wrong size. I would not be happy falling on that one. Uh, you can see it's slipping through. They're just biting on something, but I don't really know how. Uh, didn't even pull the trigger to get it out. So the first one I would have been happy falling on, but it wasn't ideal. Let's go in the middle of those two. So the red one, uh, this is a black diamond one. Put that in the same spot. Now, that's pretty good in terms of its range, isn't it? All right, it's, it's in that sort of angel. They're just, that one's just crossing. This one just isn't crossing. So that kind of difference is absolutely acceptable. That's pretty good. This side is a little bit shallow. There's not much rock above it. So that's where like just flipping it around, trying it the other way might sit a bit better. Now it's just a little bit further down. So that's, a, I'm a bit, little bit happy with that. The, they're just crossing over. So that's good in its range. I've also remembered to angle them down. If I put it in that way, what happens when I fall on it? Well, it might just move. It might move to a better spot, might move to a worse spot. It's just doing slightly weird things to it that I can't see when I'm above. So remember, angle it the direction you're gonna fall on it or load it if it's part of the belay as well. Just for the sake of it, let's put the totem in there. They can, they're different shaped lobes. So they can sit a bit more nicely sometimes. Yeah. It, it does actually sit a bit nicer, I think, that one only just is pretty marginal, but it's still, you know, just crossing over each of the lobes. So that's, you know, nicely in its range. It's angled down. I don't particularly get in the habit of yank yanking them like I do a nut because they don't need seating. But I might just get it psychological, really. Sometimes I might do that. Remember to flip them over. Try them the other way, though. Sometimes they're better. Sometimes they're worse. Actually, that one is only just touching the rocks so I'm, I'm happier with it the other way and go back or forwards a little bit we can see other placements like up here similar size actually i can put the same cam in up there it's pretty good not bad is it it's it's a bit of a bulge here so it's not like sat it'd be nice if it sat in that bit wouldn't it as a little constriction it'd be nice if this bit sort of sat in that little constriction so whilst it is you know a cam and not a nut and i don't need constrictions if it sort of butts against something that's because it's sort of, sort of sitting quite nicely hey, it's not terrible it's not perfect but that's life isn't it do you know what i mean when we're placing these bits and we're halfway up a route we can't go oh it needs to be perfect i want it to be perfect that'd be great but it can't always be perfect so you can move things around and try them i, I think i prefer where it was actually because this is only you know if it slipped at all suddenly it's opening up isn't it so i think on that one down kind of there move it up just a little bit remember we could try it the other way around as well that's pretty good there in the middle of its range happy days i said at the beginning that the crack's not quite perfect and i wanted to do that because i think that's just real life parallel cracks it's much easier to get that perfect placement of course but that's just the way it is when we're out climbing on this rock of all different shapes, sizes, textures, and what have you. You've got to give it some thought. You've got to flip them around. And the best way is to just go and have a play with them. If you've bought a set of cams or you've got a mate with a set of cams, even just the bottom of a crag like this, go and have a play. Place them, pull on them. You can clip yourselves to them and weight them a bit as long as it's safe to do so. You can just get a bit of a feel for it then that way. I always, 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 whenever I'm placing a nut or cam or whatever, I need the rock to be solid, okay, and that's no exception with cams. Because cams are turning friction into outward force, they actually put a slightly different direction and amount of loading onto the rock. So I'm thinking that if I'm putting something behind a flake, even if the flake's solid, it's definitely getting more outward force from a cam, so perhaps I would default there to using a nut, if at all possible, as a famous route in the, in the Peak District's name I forget. You can put it in the comments below, uh, where a visiting climber fell on a cam rather than a nut that everyone else has fallen on when they've done it. Excuse the bikes going past. Uh, and they snapped it and hit the ground, so give that some thought as well, but that's probably at the extreme end, but definitely a consideration, of course. So remember, they turn friction into outward force, they need some grip. The lobes want to be roughly equally loaded in the middle of the range, roughly, and angled in the direction you're gonna pull it. Extend them plenty so they don't walk in and do something unknown, and then you're probably good to go, aren't you? Flip them one way, flip them the other, clip them, go. I've fallen on cams, many people have fallen on cams. When they're placed well, super, super safe. I tend to carry a rack of cams from, by default anyway, uh, they're not all on here, but from little silver to big blue and the ones in between. 
Some routes require bigger cams, but I'll take them specifically. Some routes require smaller cams, but I'll take them specifically. Between sort of uh, silver and blue is what I'm after. And they're all racked individually on a snap gate. So I can just clip them as that or extend it if it's got the extendable sling. And they're all color coded as well to make it easier for me to reach. I know where they are on my harness, but it's just a bit easier to recognize, isn't it? Um, when it's color coded like that. Go and have a play with them if you've got some. If you're going to buy some, go to outside and I'm sure they've usually got offers on, on different things and different brands. They're all really good, but watch that one before uh, the, the, the first cam video from a few weeks ago if you want some advice on which ones. As always though, do fire away with any questions in the comments below. Happy to help as best I can. If I can, I will. Uh, do find us on Instagram, find us on Facebook, click the like button, smash the subscribe button, all the support as always, massively appreciated. People still using the buy me a coffee link and all that kind of thing, it's amazing. I'm still enjoying doing the videos, so I'm gonna keep doing them for the time being at least. As always though, thanks very much for watching. More videos coming up very soon.